Hello students, in my previous video, I have given you basic idea about life processes and in this video, I am going to talk about photosynthesis. Now, what is photosynthesis? In simple terms, I can say it is a process by which plants manufacture their food. Definition wise, you can say photosynthesis is a biochemical process by which plants, generally green plants, manufacture their own food using carbon dioxide and water as the raw material in the presence of sunlight. The oxygen that is released, it is a byproduct of photosynthesis. And remember students, photosynthesis is the only process by which solar energy can be converted to chemical energy. And when we write the reaction of photosynthesis, we write 6 molecules of carbon dioxide reacts with 12 molecules of water to give carbohydrate which is also known as starch and oxygen and water is released in the process and this reaction takes place in the presence of light energy generally sunlight is used and this sunlight is trapped by chlorophyll pigments but remember this type of no reaction take place inside the plants this is the overall equation of photosynthesis clear this is the overall equation this type of no reaction take place directly now what is the significance of photosynthesis why it is important since I think class 4 5 you are studying about it. It is because photosynthesis provides food not only for the plants, it provides food for all. Though the process of photosynthesis occurs in green plant, but these green plants are the primary producers in a food chain. From the plants, herbivores used to get their food. From the herbivores, carnivores used to get their food. So in this way, all the organisms directly or indirectly depend on this reaction. Another important point is that this photosynthesis converts atmospheric carbon dioxide and generally this carbon dioxide is produced by respiration and other activities back to oxygen. And that's why this reaction is so important for all the living organisms. From this figure you can understand that there are two basic raw materials which are required for this process. One is carbon dioxide, another is water. So carbon dioxide and water serve as a raw material and light, generally sunlight, act as a source of energy. And here chlorophyll pigments help in absorbing the sunlight. So during the process, carbon dioxide and water act as raw materials and sunlight serves as a source of energy. The role of a leaf in the process of photosynthesis. Now leaves are the most suitable and the well adapted organs to carry out the process of photosynthesis. If we take a section of a leaf, below the cuticular layer, there is a cellular layer. This layer is called upper epidermis. Similarly, in the lower part also, another layer is there, which is called lower epidermis. In the lower epidermis, there are minute pores. These pores are called stomata, which are guarded by two cells, which are called guard cells. And this stomata, it facilitate the exchange of gases between plant and the atmosphere. Below the upper epidermis, one tissue is that this tissue is called mesophyll tissue, which can be further differentiated into one is called pellicid tissue and that is called spongy mesophyll. Chloroplast, which is one of the cell organelle in a plant cell are mainly concentrated in the upper layer of the leaf. This helps them to obtain light energy very quickly. Sunlight is mainly absorbed by the chlorophyll pigments and by using this energy, carbon dioxide and water can combine with the help of certain enzymes to form sugar. Now these cells are called pellicid cells. Now this is one pellicid cell. Here you can see the major part is occupied by the vacuole, nucleus is there and the cell organelle where photosynthesis reaction take place is the chloroplast. And this is the part or this is the organelle where all the reactions of photosynthesis occur. If we see the inner part of a chloroplast, then we are going to get this type of picture. Now inside the chloroplast, there are two major components. One is called granum and that is called stroma. Again, each layer of granum is called thylakoids. In case of photosynthesis, there are two phases. The first part is called the light reaction and the second part is called Kelvin cycle or dark reaction. In case of light reaction, light plays a very important role. This reaction takes place in the thylakoids of granum and dark reaction takes place in stroma of the chloroplast. 
Now I am going to discuss the main steps that takes place in light reaction. In light reaction, the first step is excitation of chlorophyll. Light energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll in the form of photons. And this chlorophyll attains a higher energy state. And once it is in the excited state, it will release an electron. And this electron will then move from one electron acceptor to another in a series of oxidation reduction reaction. So after being exposed to light energy, the chlorophyll molecules are excited and they release electron. This is the first step. The second step of light reaction is splitting of water which is also known as photolysis. As electron is lost by the chlorophyll, to replace this electron, water will now split in the form of highly active hydrogen ion, oxygen and it will release two electrons. And this is the oxygen which is released during the process of photosynthesis. The third step of light reaction is the formation of ATP. The hydrogen ions, whatever is formed during splitting of water, these hydrogen ions will flow and in the process it will release energy. And using this energy, inorganic phosphate is added to ADP, adenosine diphosphate to form ATP, adenosine triphosphate and these ATP molecules will be used during dark reaction as a source of energy. Clear? So in the third step where formation of ATP takes place, so whatever hydrogen ions are formed during photolysis, these hydrogen ions flow and in the process they release energy and using this energy, inorganic phosphate will be added to adenosine diphosphate, in short we say ADP and it forms adenosine triphosphate which is ATP and this ATP is used during dark reaction. One chemical that is present in the granum is NADP, full form is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Now the hydrogen ions that are released by the splitting of water and these energized electrons, these two then reduce NADP to NADPH and this NADPH is also used during dark reaction. So at the end of light reaction, ATP and NADP will be formed which are used in the next part. So in short we can say light reactions occur in Brenna of chloroplast where sunlight is captured, water is split and oxygen is given out and during the process it forms ATP and NADPH and these two are used in the dark reaction. The second phase of photosynthesis is called Kelvin cycle or dark reaction. This is the biosynthetic phase of the photosynthesis. The dark reaction occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. This reaction does not require light energy, but it does not mean that it occurs during dark only. This is a light independent reaction. Now the dark reaction occurs simultaneously with the light reaction and the time gap between light reaction and the dark reaction is less than a second. In the dark reaction, NADP and the ATP which were formed during light reaction, these two are utilized to convert carbon dioxide to sugar. In case of dark reaction, there are three steps. First step is called carbon dioxide fixation. Second one is called carbon dioxide reduction and third step is called regeneration of RUBP. In the first step, which is called carbon dioxide fixation, carbon dioxide absorbed from the atmosphere is attached to RUBP. RUBP is a 5 carbon molecule and together carbon dioxide and RUBP forms a 6 carbon molecule. That 6 carbon molecule is very unstable and it will split to form a 3 carbon molecule which is called glycerate 3 phosphate. Now in the second step, which is called the carbon dioxide reduction, here carbon dioxide will slowly convert to carbohydrate. And during this phase, reactions use NADPH and some of ATP. In this step, electrons are added from NADPH and glycerate 3-phosphate will convert to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is a 3-carbon sugar. And during this process, NADPH converts to NADP and some of ATP converts to ADP. These two, NADP and ADP, these two return to thylakoids so that during the light reaction they can again convert to NADPH and ATP. One of the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecule is set aside as a building block for glucose 
and majority of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate move to the third phase. In third step, which is called the regeneration of RUBP, small amount of ATP is utilized to convert this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to RUBP. And then the cycle continues. One important point that we have to remember here is that to form a glucose molecule which is a 6-carbon sugar, the cycle actually has to turn 6 times because in each turn cycle adds only 1 carbon from incoming carbon dioxide. So after 6 turns one glucose molecule is formed. Arc reaction is dependent on light reaction because NADPH and ATP these two are formed during light reaction. After the photosynthesis one of the major end product is glucose and this glucose is either immediately used up by the cells or is stored in the form of starch. The water that is produced during the process, it may be utilized by the plant or it is reutilized for the process of photosynthesis. The oxygen that is formed during the process, it diffuses out into the atmosphere through the stomata in leaves. This oxygen is used by all of us and other living organisms in during respiration. I hope the process of photosynthesis and the steps light reaction and dark reaction are now clear. Now what are the factors affecting photosynthesis? There are a number of factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis. These factors are light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, temperature and water. Now in case of light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis increases linearly with the increase in the intensity of light. However, extremely high intensities of light do not increase the rate of photosynthesis. In case of carbon dioxide concentration, the rate of photosynthesis increases with an increase in the carbon dioxide concentration. In case of temperature, the rate of photosynthesis increases by the increase in temperature up to 40 degrees centigrade. Above this temperature, there is a decrease in the rate of photosynthesis. Even low temperatures inhibit the rate of photosynthesis. And in case of water, water rarely becomes a limiting factor because less than 1% of the water absorbed by the plant is actually used for photosynthesis. In the next part, I am going to explain nutrition in humans. Till then, bye bye, take care and wait for the next video.